A few months ago, I did a video on this Sony 200 600 millimeter telephoto lens, and after I put the video up online, I realized that it might seem a little bit extremely positive and that I just focused on everything that was good about the lens, and I didn't really talk about any negatives. Uh, at least not in depth, and I've had the lens for about a year now, and I've used it a lot, so now I want to do a bit of a long-term kind of casual review. It won't be real in depth, but I want to talk now maybe a little bit on those things that maybe aren't so perfect about the lens. So the question after using it for a year, what is wrong with this lens? I'll just go ahead and say right up front, not much, but I will talk about a few things that may or may not be good and uh, just a little bit more about what it's been like to use it for all this time. So first of all, I've been still using it with an a7S III, uh, more for video when I do that, and then I've used the a7 III. I've not switched the a7 IV yet, still using the a7 III, this body right here, and that does kind of limit what you can get out of the lens. So. Uh, first of all, the lens seems to be much more capable than this body in terms of, of uh, rendering detail and so forth. So um, we'll keep that in mind as I go through these things. So first and foremost, the sharpness uh, is a very sharp lens. Uh, that hasn't changed my opinion about that. The general image quality is great. The out of focus areas look great. It just really ticks the box where that's concerned. As far as like distortion and chromatic aberration, uh, they're pretty minimal. Uh, I feel like uh, for photos, they're easily corrected in Lightroom. And for videos, it's kind of not really noticeable unless uh, chromatic aberration, I guess if you were to shoot into just extreme high contrast, you would uh, encounter a bit of that, but that's not really a normal thing with this lens for me anyway. So I've not really had that problem very often with it. So as far as the weight is concerned, it is a pretty heavy lens um, and it will kind of wear on you to walk around and shoot handheld with it for extended periods. Uh, but I do use a tripod a fair amount with it. Um, and if I do shoot handheld, I try to find places where I can get myself propped up if I need to stay in the same place for very long. But having said that, if you're looking for something light, uh, this definitely isn't the lightest lens you could find. But the quality and the sturdiness of this lens really do make a good case for tolerating that extra weight. Now I have heard some people online complain about the arrangement of the buttons and the uh, zoom and focus rings. And I think some of it's just personal preference and then also some of it is just deciding which is the lesser of two evils. So I feel like the uh, zoom ring being out on the further end and the focus being behind actually works out pretty well because I'm usually supporting the lens more on the end and that zoom is something that is a heavier touch to turn it. So that works better to me and then I can easily reach back with my thumb and just kind of move the focus ring uh, really easily because it's a very smooth and easy ring to turn. Um, and also, since I'm supporting out towards the end, I'm not as likely to bump the focus ring while I'm supporting the lens. So again, I feel like it was actually well thought out and sometimes you just have to figure out which is the, the uh, least uh, annoying of the two ways you could do something. Now another thing is that it can be a little bit weird to reach back and turn on and off the autofocus manual focus switch or selecting the focus range switch. Now that particular switch might be one of my biggest annoyances on the lens. I love having that switch but it's a little bit fiddly to get in there and actually adjust that little switch and just find that middle spot to get the limited range that I'm looking for because I'm usually wanting to limit it to close up and that one is the middle setting so that's a little bit fussy for me to try to get in there and get that one on the fly but I've kind of adapted to it so I accept it and work with it um, it's not a big deal but it is a little fussy so that's one area that I think maybe could have been a little different. Um, now, another thing about the physical attributes of it, the collar and the foot, um, I like it. Uh, it makes a good handle for carrying it. I don't really like using a strap for the lens. Um, I know someone had asked me a while back if I had a strap that I like to use with this lens, but I really just don't like using camera straps very much anyway. So I never really want to put a strap on this lens at this point. Um, maybe someday I'll 
be inspired to do so, but I just really haven't haven't wanted that. I like being able to just carry it by hand, and I like holding it by the by the uh, tripod collar or by the foot. So um, that's really kind of a convenient thing to me, and you can just turn it to put it on top if you want to kind of just carry it that way and then have it out of the way later. Um, but a lot of times I even support uh, on the fly with the foot, so I'll leave it on the bottom the way it normally would be. Um, now it does have a nice little easy way to latch it and release it real quick if you just want to take it off and you know off of the collar so that's convenient I do wish though that Sony would offer a version um, that wasn't just third party that would be like a Manfrotto size plate or something like that so um, that would have been nice but anyway you can't have everything uh, I guess uh, that's the thing about some of these negatives is that I don't really expect them to be always solved so um, and they're just minor annoyances, and there's a way around it, because like in this case, I just attach a Manfrotto plate right to the bottom of the foot, um, and that works out just fine, and it's a smaller one, so it's not really adding a lot of, uh, you know, weight or anything to it. So that's not a problem for me, really. I just work around it, um, even though I might have preferred something a little different. Now another area that I've seen people uh, make a little bit of a complaint with this lens, and it's common for Sony lenses, is that it has some focus breathing. And in this lens, it results in the fact that when you're shooting something that's very close or close to its uh, close focusing distance, um, you don't really get the benefit, the full benefit of a 600 millimeter uh, telephoto range. You're actually uh, getting sort of a a lesser magnification. Now I've heard Tony Northrup suggest using extension tubes to kind of regain some of that uh, by adjusting where the focus would be. Um, now I would like to try that at some point, but I just haven't bought those for this lens yet. And, and it really hasn't been much of a problem. I've been able to get real close and still get a uh, decent magnification of small birds. So uh, no real complaints yet, but I will probably try the extension tubes at some point uh, to see if I can mitigate a little bit of that focus breathing problem on close up subjects. Um, so anyway, uh, that's something to think about though with this lens. It does have that little bit of a limitation there. Now, as far as the stabilization is concerned on this lens, I feel like it performs really well. I think Sony cameras or Sony mirrorless cameras with their their in-body stabilization is really more the limit. Um, they have a very large sensor and a very small mount, so uh, there's just not a lot of room to stabilize the sensor, so I feel like that's where the limitation is more than on the lens. I feel like this lens actually does give you a lot of ability to shoot uh, handheld with lower shutter speeds than what I would have expected actually. So I feel like the optical image stabilization that's in the lens actually performs really well. It's just the Sony uh, in-body stabilization that, that just really isn't all that fantastic. It's okay, but it's not like Panasonic or something like that. So if you're used to the Panasonic type stabilization, especially their uh, GH5 and so forth, then this would be totally a uh, different experience for you and, and underwhelming to say the least. But it does work and it is reasonably smooth, so that's, that's acceptable as far as I'm concerned for the other, other advantages in this system. So after using the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter telephoto lens for about a year, uh, I can ask myself that question, what is wrong with this lens? And the answer is very little, just like it was at the beginning, it's just very little wrong with it. Um, I'm very happy with the image quality and any of the little issues that I might have with it are all perfectly within uh, the range of things that can be accepted or worked around. So I still feel like this is a great lens for the money if you're in the Sony system and you want something that's kind of in that prosumer range, I guess. Um, it's good enough to be used for pro results as far as I'm concerned, even though it's not a 600 millimeter prime. Uh, but you can get great results with this lens. And again, I'm just using it with an a7 III most of the time, and sometimes the a7S III for video. And I feel like the lens massively outperforms the cameras when it comes to uh, the ability to render detail and sharpness. So I feel like this lens would pair up even more effectively with some of the higher bodies like the A1 and as far as like the mid-range body, the newer A7 IV, 
um, which I would love to have. I just haven't gotten that camera yet, but I'm still getting really good results with it. And it's still helping me grow as a photographer, and especially for wildlife or anything of that nature. So the bottom line is this is a great lens. I still stand by my glowing review that I started out with a few months ago. So this video was just me affirming what I thought to start with after about a year of use, this thing still holds up and I'm really glad. And it's a big part of the reason that I'm actually happy with the Sony uh, camera lineup is to get to use this 200 to 600 millimeter uh, telephoto lens. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you're considering this lens, maybe uh, you could hear some of my positives in, really not so negative, but just some of the things that, that kind of come along with a lens like this. Um, but anyway, hopefully it maybe helps you decide on whether you should have this lens or not. Or if you bought one, maybe it just affirms that uh, it's a great lens to you as well. So anyway, leave your comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Click like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.